Okay, perfect. So let's, why is this not working? Okay, so um, a little bit about me and a little bit about our Health Made Simple community. So uh, my name is Stephanie and, uh, um, oops, hang on one quick. Let me mute everyone. <laughs> so many buttons to do when you do these things. Um, so my name is Stephanie. I am a physical therapist in the Dallas area. I um, have my own um, cash-based physical therapy practice. So uh, when you, when I'm prepping and doing things, um, I have to do things that are really simple because I'm super busy. But I integrated nutrition into my practice uh, not too long ago because I had a lot of health health issues and I got really frustrated with the whole medical system because they weren't really able to help me. And uh, a little bit about my story, I grew up super active. I was the athlete, I mean, age of two, I was in sports just because I had so much energy. My parents were trying to like calm me down. Um, when I um, grew up, I started with gymnastics and was full fledged, like four hours a day, every single day um, in gymnastics, went on to play soccer and then went on to play college soccer. Um, this is one of my soccer picks. <laughs> and uh, I then went on to play semi-professional soccer and then marathon training. And literally by the end of my 20s, my body completely fell apart. Um, if you looked at me on the outside, I was super fit. But on the inside, um, I was completely exhausted, uh, taking naps before going out to dinner with friends, thinking that this, I just, you know, I, I just didn't have the energy to, to do it. I was getting sick all the time, had allergies. And in a year and a half period of time, in my late 20s, I had bronchitis, pneumonia, and then cancer. And the cancer I had was basically a virus that kept on attacking me. It dealt with it for two and a half years, two surgeries. Um, they literally wanted me to have a third surgery, and I was like, I'm done. Like, I'm done. I'm going to figure something else out. And in the meantime, my friend um, who I played soccer with, she's a nutritionist, and she worked with a lot of the top, top plant-based physicians. Um, that were out there and she kept on sharing with me like Stephanie you need to look at this this this, this whole food product use plus it's just plants um, I think you'd really like it I like the research on it. I was like yeah whatever um, you know most of, most of the stuff that's out there doesn't have research so I literally was like um, I had to hit my low point before after probably her a year of sharing <laughs> information with me before I was ready to look at, at, at anything. And I was looking for anything and everything, doing a ton of research, because I really did not want to have that third surgery. So when I looked at it, I loved that it was food. I loved the fact that it was, there was a lot of research behind it. And, I, and for me, I thought my diet was good enough, but I knew I needed some extra help, which my diet wasn't good enough. So I started um, taking this product and started making a few changes. And, and when I went back to the doctor in four months, everything was normal for the first time. And it really opened my eye about like, wow, it's just plants. Like that's all I've been doing. All I've been adding is plants. And so I did a lot more research. And as I was doing more research, it really made me want to make even more changes. Um, I um, are part, I'm part of this like amazing community that has helped me with learning and cooking and just, um, just a, a, an awesome resource. So that's a little bit about my story. One of the things that I love to do is, um, uh, next, I don't know why it's not doing it. One of the things that I love to do is I love to travel. This is my husband and uh, some of my friends, but we travel all over the place. Um, he also has a pretty awesome story in the sense he was um, having a lot of like stomach issues, literally getting colonoscopy and colonoscopy like for 10 years, having bloating, um, a lot of stomach pains and um, just not feeling good. And I kept on sharing with him, like, you should change your diet. And um, of course, just like most, you know, I know you either have picky eaters, whether they're, they're your kids or your, your spouses, it was really hard for him to, to make some of those changes or really buy into that. And so we started him out with one simple change of just getting him to add just like the, the fruits and vegetables and, you know, in a capsule, the juice plus into his diet. And all of a sudden he came home after about four or five months and was like, all I want is a salad and, and some fruit. And I'm like, oh my God, who are you? <laughs> like my, my husband likes meat and potatoes. Like he doesn't ever want to come home and only have a plant-based diet. So he started making changes to his diet because he was starting to crave some of those foods. And a lot of his, all of his stomach pains went away, a lot, a lot of his bloating. And he literally was dealing with this for 10 years. So it just again shows you the power of, of plants and how it can help.
A little bit about our community. I love our community. One of the things I love about it for the most part is just the fact that it's a referral, referral source for me. So like if I have someone that needs like a doctor, I can go to a doctor on our team who thinks like me to be able to help my clients even beyond of what, what I can do. Or if I need someone that can teach yoga or that's a personal trainer or that does meditation or that, you know, I have resources that I can really help to, um, to really impact people's lives. And that's one of, probably the biggest thing that I love about this community. So let's get into a little bit about why, like why fruits and vegetables are so important. Um, they say the news isn't that fruits and vegetables are good for you. It's so good for you that it can save your life. And if you look at it, we'll get into a little bit more, but you know, from a simplistic standpoint, um, if you breathe in oxygen, we have to have oxygen. And if you breathe in oxygen, take a deep breath in and exhale, we have to have oxygen in order to live. And so, um, when we breathe it in, we use the oxygen and the byproduct of us using that oxygen produces what we call oxidative stress. And that accumulation over time, year after year, day after day, um, literally that accumulates. And that oxidative stress, if we don't take care of it, it, it wreaks havoc in our body. It's what produces, oxidative stress produces heart disease, cancers, um, it can produce, I mean, autoimmune type stuff, like that's, it's oxidative stress that's, that's doing that. So what we need to do to, to combat that are, are adding antioxidants to our body. And guess where we get the antioxidants from? We get them from fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, grains. These are the things that we need to eat. So it's why fruits and vegetables are so important. So if you're really looking to like extend your life and, and feel the best and have that like, like youth bottled up, well, it's bottled up in, in fruits and vegetables. That's, that's how we um, live a better life and, and live, like really live, live life. So some of the, there's a lot of movies out there, but some of my favorite ones are uh, Forks Over Knives. So if you're just wanting to learn more about like what plants really can do for you, fantastic movie. It's one of the first ones that came out. And one, another one is The Game Changer. So if you have an athlete that's in the house, um, this is a fantastic one because they really show like how, like how plants can really improve, improve your performance. And um, most people don't really think that, that that's the case. And so here's just some just delicious meals. I, you know, share another story. My dad used to tell everyone that um, if, uh, if I was cooking, I literally could like burn water because that's how bad I was. And, and I just want to give you hope that you can actually be better because now people look at me going, wow, you make some amazing meals or you should make your own recipe book for, for your salads. And so um, it is possible for you to get better uh, because let me tell you, I, I literally did not eat this way when I was a kid. I was a, a pasta, a macaroni and cheese cereal type kid. I um, ate horrible, um, but I was so active that you couldn't tell. So that's where you go into like, you know, the difference between being fit and being healthy. I was fit, but I wasn't healthy. So there is hope for your kids. <laughs> There's hope for your spouse that you can actually make changes and, um, and actually make some beautiful meals. So one of the other things I love about our community is that we do a lot of virtual education and support. Um, I love education. I love providing education. I love empowering people for them to make their own changes. And that's exactly what we do. Uh, we have uh, meal prep and cooking demos like this. We do community catch, um, connection events. We do healthy living workshops. Um, a lot of them can be live. Some of them are online. Obviously we don't have very many things live right now, but, um, but there are a lot of things that on how we can provide value uh, to to our friends, to you know, our, our neighbors, our family, our coworkers, or whoever want, is looking to make some, some changes. So one of the little things we have is a little um, swag bag. So if you're interested in wanting some of these things, definitely get with a person that invited you uh, to this talk. Um, we have like plant-based uh, uh, cooking books. Um, we have videos for fitness videos. We have fun family resources for start, starting um, strong kids. So we have a lot of really cool things. So if you're interested in any of these, definitely get with the person that invited you here. One of the things that I love um, is we do kind of this shred 10 where we have 10 guidelines. And um, we do them a lot of different ways depending on like who the person is, but really just ways of, of making us healthier. Um, so the first thing we, you know, adding more plant foods with Juice Plus because it really helps bridge that gap. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that later. Adding one to two shakes a day and um, shakes literally saved my life as far as like making my, my, my life more simple. 
um, because it's a no brainer food that's fast and I can take it with me and go because I'm super busy. Adding plenty of water, water is super important. Sleep is super important. Um, adding exercise most days of the week. And this can be anything that you wanna do. It could be like taking walks outside, riding a bike or going to dance class. I mean, there's a lot of ways um, that you can exercise. Just do the one that, that you'll actually do. Reduce or eliminate eating after 6 p.m. You know, when they say like there's that, that fasting time, you know, we want to have that fasting time, which is partly why you want to eat um, before six so that you can really give your body like a good at least 12 hour time where it's not digesting or doing anything. It can totally rest. And so that's what that, that's all about. Reduce or eliminate processed foods. Um, reduce or eliminate um, caffeine and alcohol. Um, eliminate gluten and dairy highly like inflammatory foods, and then eliminate uh, refined and artificial sugars. So these are the 10 guidelines, kind of a program that we set up. We have cookbooks, a lot of different things, support. So if anyone's interested in learning more about that, let us know. We have a plant, uh, Powered by Plants community. So if you're looking to wanting to more, more solutions and ideas and education, we have a Facebook group. So we definitely can get you um, invited into that group as well. One of the things that I love, because it's all about how can we get more plants into our body? And one of the things that I love is the tower garden. It's a way that you can actually grow um, a lot of produce in a really small space. As long as you have some sunlight, you need a little bit of electricity, um, but it's pretty amazing. It uses 98% less water than traditional gardening, 90% um, less space, 30% more yield, three times faster in growing, and it's safe and it's nutritious. And they've actually done research on this product compared to like the best farmers doing the exact same type of produce. And that's where these numbers come from. But it's a really cool way for the family to kind of grow food, especially now, because who knows what's going to be happening to our food chain. Um, we probably, you know, with people working and people getting sick, and it's, it's, it's going to affect our food chain in some way at some point. So this is an easy way to add more plants into our body, and it's fun. And let me tell you, I do not have a green thumb. I am shocked that um, I'm allowed to actually go into Home Depot because I've taken plants back so many times because they've died um, and they give you free plants to replace them. And I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing. But I actually can keep this up and alive. So it's pretty amazing. Here's like just an example of one, a beautiful two tower gardens of uh, people growing and some of the awesome food that you can get out of it. And those of you that have kids, literally, um, the kids will actually be like want to grow it and they want to see it and they'll want to touch it and feel it and actually eat it. Um, so if you have kids and they want to eat greens, this is a great way of, of doing it. So why do we need seven to 13 servings of fruits and vegetables every single day? Um, I get these questions all the time. Um, you know, a lot of it is because we're picking things so early. And so um, with us picking things, you know, the last few days of, of actually the growth of a food is where you, get, where you get the most nutrition. It also gives you the best flavor too. And so um, when we pick it so early, we're losing some of that nutrition. So that's why the servings are a little bit higher. We're transporting food th you know, thousands of miles away. 90% of, of Americans don't eat enough servings and we definitely don't get a variety. And I know that can be the case for me as well because I tend to eat the same foods because I don't want to, um, I, I just, I, I go from like simple and, and I don't have to think about some of the meals that I'm doing. So, you know, not eating the variety is, is one of my problems. Now, I know it says on there, athletes need to eat more. And this is why. So remember when I told you about when you breathe in oxygen and you use that oxygen, um, that produces oxidative stress. And that oxidative stress is what wreaks havoc. It accumulates over time. That's what produces all the, the, the disease processes and things like that. So guess what happens when you are exercising or you're an athlete? You're out there running, you're doing stuff, you're breathing in more oxygen, which is why you're, you're seeing athletes having issues as they get into their 20s or 30s, like some pretty significant issues. It's because of that. So your diet should be even better if you're an athlete, which mine was not, and you need to eat upwards of, of like 18 servings of fruits and vegetables, which is crazy. Um, it's just another reason why I like um, taking my juice plus. So that's what this is. You have what we should eat and what we probably are eating. And this really just kind of helps bridge the gap of just getting more plants and getting that variety in, in it. One of the things that I love um, about, about the product is, uh, is the research behind it. Like that's what sold me was because 
there was so much research that was that was top research with uh, top journals, um, top investigators, and and that's ultimately what what made me say yes to it. Now let's look at like a multivitamin versus eating the whole food. So when you do a multivitamin, they only take out a few pieces of of what they think is important and put it into a vitamin. And so that's very synthetic versus, and, and our body a lot of times doesn't recognize what that is. But we have a food source and there's tens of thousands of different phytonutrients that they found like just in an apple. So when you have an apple, you have all these, these phytonutrients and they work together so that the body knows what it needs to take from it. And everyone's body is a little bit different, but from a multivitamin, our body doesn't recognize it. Um, it doesn't know what to do with it, which is often why you see people are pooping the pills out. And that's what they kind of say. Um, it's also why you see that your color, your pea color may be completely different because our body's not absorbing it. And so when you move over to where it's more plants, then you'll notice that that, that doesn't happen. And again, this is the reason why this is just all different ways of getting a lot of different plants into, into our body. And so these are all the, I mean, this is 30 different produce that you can get that's basically been vine, picked vine ripes. They freeze it within 24 to 48 hours. It's like juice, like in a big Vitamix. So it's the, the rind, the core, the seeds, all of it's being, are blended together. And then they're pulling the water out at a very low temperature. And then they encapsulate it or they put it in a chew for kids, sometimes for adults too. So let's look a bit, a little bit about um, kind of where they get their produce funds. So we're going to watch this short video. The fact that we actually grow a lot of these products very close to the factory, and we can preserve the freshness, and they can be harvested and processed within just a couple hours of when they come out of the field, as opposed to maybe some of the produce you might buy in the store where it has to go through uh, trucking and shipping and a lot of different steps to be available to you. These processes that we do are done just within a few hours of when the product's harvested. From the farm through our plant, the fresh product actually only takes about six hours. When the product arrives at our farm processing plant, the product is tumbled, washed, and cleaned. The clean product is then laid out over the processing belt and slowly moved through sub-zero air. When we're doing that, we're able to freeze the product and preserve all the freshness of the product just as if it was from the field. The sooner you can lower the temperature and control the temperature, the more you can lock in the nutrients. When Juice Plus is looking for nutritional quality, color is very important. Most people associate a dark red cranberry as a sign of the ripeness of that fruit. Freshness is very important. There's a very short amount of time from when they're harvested to when they're frozen, locking in the freshness and nutrients. While we're producing the Juice Plus powders, they have very high standards for the purity of their powders, what can go into their powders. They also have tight controls over their supply lines. They know which farms it comes from, and they have a good control over that. Also, when the products are produced, they have certain steps throughout the process for safety and purity. My favorite part of working with Juice Plus is knowing that people are benefiting from what we're doing. We put a lot of work into how we grow our ingredients and how we process them so that they're safe and high quality and nutritious. It's neat to see the results of that by seeing the customers that use them and seeing their lives improved from some of the healthy ingredients and produce that we process. So this is my mom. She's almost 80 years old. Um, pretty amazing. She's on like zero medications. We literally just had a trip and this is on top of this like pretty steep rock. Uh, and it's a place called Enchanted Rock. It's the second biggest rock in the, in the United States. And she like navigated her way up and navigated her way down. She does Pilates in my office two days a week. So, I mean, it's, it's just pretty amazing. And she really, really tries to lead that like plant-based based lifestyle. Um, and she's doing fantastic, like no health issues, no problems, um, you know, for someone that's almost 80 years old. One of the other things that I love are the plant-based omegas. Um, it's the only plant-based omega that I know that gets the wide spectrum of the omegas. Well, I, my doctor put me on a fish oil, and um, as soon as these came out, I switched over to uh, this omega, and literally, like, my hair was just improved. Like I, my, my ends were splitting and they were getting really dry and I was having to get my hair cut more often. And as soon as I switched over to this, 
it wasn't happening anymore. My skin was getting better. My nails were, were much stronger. Um, mental clarity um, also uh, was better. So just another way to get more plants uh, into our body. These are just some of the meals that I've made before. I usually post stuff, um, um, not all the time, but some of the times. Uh, and like, again, super easy, not hard to make. These shakes literally changed my life. It's all plants. Like one of the things I love about it is that it has a nutrition label on the back of it. It doesn't have a supplement label, which most things um, do that are out there. And it has fiber. It's the only product really that I found that tastes so good. Um, has eight grams of fiber, which is pretty amazing. So it keeps you full. Um, it keeps you that sustained energy. It's great for someone, even if you're a diabetic, because of that, it has a low glycemic load. Um, and it has a ton of produce, again, in it. There's broccoli, radish, alfalfa, chickpea, millet, quinoa, amaranth, pea, rice, and uh, water wash soy and mushrooms. And the mushrooms actually is one of the only few, few food sources that actually give you vitamin D. So you're gonna be getting some vitamin D while you do these. And so it's very unique because it's just food. It's not a multivitamin. It has a food label, no additives, no GMO. It's vegan, kosher, dairy-free, gluten-free. It's NS certified, NS certified, which is a third party where they can come in and test it and they have to, what they, what we say is in it has to really be in it, um, which is um, a pretty awesome high-end certification. And it's the most researched product that's out there. Um, you're not, there's more research on this product than most drugs that doctors pass out. And so it's really easy, you know, for just $2.50 a day. It's just another way to get like 30 different plants into our body. Um, they have a, a program where, um, Kids can eat free. Um, I love the shakes. They're super, they're like cheap, cheap. It's just a cheap meal, literally. Um, and then we have the omegas. The research showing on the kids, it's pretty mis amazing. And I'd probably say this too, if you have like a stubborn spouse that doesn't like to eat as well. Um, these are the things that you'll notice that they're gonna, they're gonna get sick less often. Um, they're taking fewer over-the-counter medications. They're drinking more water. They're visiting the doctor less consuming less fast food and soft drinks and they're eating more fruits and vegetables. And if you have all this happening and they're trying to, and they're moving towards eating better, you're going to save so much money from doctor visits to medications to all sorts of things. And kids get it for free, which is pretty amazing with an adult order. These are some of our community. Um, we do a lot of events. We do monthly events here and bring just our community together, have so much fun. Um, and I know we have this in a lot of different parts of, of the, the United States. And then some si six simple steps to kind of meal prep. So having like soup and stews and different things where you can put in a slow cooker or an Instapot makes your life so easy. And we're gonna make something today, which is so, it's easy. And the cool thing is, is you can take these things and take a part of it and freeze it. And then when you're ready to go and eat it, you have another meal that you can use later, like a month, month down the road, like, oh my gosh, my life is a little crazy. Oh, let me go pull this out and heat this up. Salad um, bars, uh, salad and power bowls are so easy and quick to make. Um, you know, at least one, like on Sunday, one of the things I do is I plan my whole week out, which is like makes your life so much easier as well. But that's usually when I try something new because I have a little bit more time on Sunday to cook and prep. And so that's how I like, I'm always introducing some, some new recipe. And then from those, I find my staples that I love that I can make really quickly. Uh, but that, those are some things that I do. Man, and Tanya's smoothie and breakfast, um, they have changed my life, made my life so much easier. Um, snacks, always washing and cutting fresh fruits and vegetables. Make sure, so you can pull something out of the refrigerator versus like pulling out chips and, or dips and different things that you know you shouldn't be eating. And then save the day with supplies, like I was talking about, freeze some meals. And then you can, um, you can take them and prep them and, and get them, like they'll be ready to go for you. So here is our shopping list. We're gonna get started on um, making, um, our first thing we're gonna start with is overnight oats. So I'm gonna give it to Gina here. Um, and then we're gonna do chili and then we're gonna do the salad. So let me stop this. And Gina, if you wanna unmute yourself, we can. I think we're good. We're good. Awesome. <laughs> Hi guys, I'm Gina. Um, I love Stephanie's intro about um, being an athlete and not necessarily in the kitchen. And I have to laugh because that's totally me. Um, my kids, when I come in the kitchen, um, they're very, it's very comical most of the time. Um, I grew up with meat potatoes and just about standard. So when I 
little bit about my background. I have a health education degree and uh, was a physical therapist. And I knew for years that what I was lacking was the nutrition part. Um, you know, bringing my kids, I always you know, had that mom guilt of, you know, I could do better. I know there's other things out there. Um, I'm a cancer survivor as well. I was diagnosed with breast cancer at 29. And doctors always said, well, you know, it's going to come back. You're so young. And, you know, it, that was me. I thought, well, you know, I, I'll figure that out along the way. And if it happens, I'll deal with it. But, you know, learning more about nutrition and health um, has just been amazing with this community. But I think what really kind of broke the camel's back is when two of my older young adult kids um, have been diagnosed recently with borderline hypothyroidism. And they wanted to put them on medication. I'm thinking, all right, you know what? Enough's enough. I got to figure this out. Um, didn't know how to jump right into the whole you know, healthy cooking and living and all that stuff. But this community has been amazing because it's encouraged me to take baby steps. Um, I have my kids and myself on the Juice Plus, um, and that was just a start. That was a place to bridge the gap until I could, you know, gradually move into this um, kind of a change of lifestyle. And it has just been incredible. Um, our food palette is starting to change instead of going to all the um, prepackaged uh, processed foods. It's, you know, easing our way into the salads and um, the stews. And I'm telling you, if I can do this and my family can slowly graduate into the graduate into this, um, anybody can do this. So just um, a synopsis of me and uh, just letting you know that this community has been awesome because it's helped me to reprogram and make better choices and baby steps. And that's something I can totally do. So to jump into what I'm going to do is the overnight oats. I uh, love this recipe because I can um, make it in just the, the regular um, recipe that you have here, or I can double or triple it and then stick it in the fridge and then scoop out what I want to uh, as I go. So for the example here, I'm just going to go ahead and double everything, whereas you guys have, uh, I'll call out what re the recipe says with you. So to start with um, one half cup of oats, I'm just doubling, like I said, I'm going to double everything. And then add that in, um, and then one and a half tablespoons of the seeds, you can pour that in, and then two tablespoons of cashews. Um, I just pulled them out of the bag. You can chop them up finer if you'd like. Um, this is a shake that Stephanie was talking about earlier. I love this stuff because it's an easy go-to. Um, I use this at work. I use this on, on the go. Um, so it calls for one and a half, but I'm actually doing double. So. And then um, the non-dairy milk, I like to use the um, non-sweet vanilla. That just gives me a little flavor, but I think already having the vanilla in here, it might give it kind of a sweeter taste. So just whatever you choose to use as far as the non-dairy would be great. So, and then all, I ha all you have to do is basically stir this up. And guys, this is super, super simple. So you stir it all up. And an easy way to do it to keep it fresh is um, the jar with the seal. You can pop it in there. Um, sometimes after I do this, I'll scoop it out and, pre you know, have it ready to go, like in a small pre Six bowl. Um, Tina, how much milk did you use? I'm sorry? How, mi how much milk did you use? For me, I doubled it. So it, oh, I'm sorry, that was one and a fourth. That's supposed to be one and a fourth cups on the recipe. So I doubled it. So I just used two and a half. But that is Thank the you. correct amount. <laughs> one and a fourth. So once I get this all stirred up, I can either, like I said, just done, put it in an individual container or a small jar because these keep everything nice and fresh or well, everything in here and then scoop it out and then when you're ready to go you chop up um, you have whatever fruits you like to add I'm gonna i guess. love blueberries thrown on that when they're in season strawberries pop it with some bananas you can mix them all up but it is so simple guys and it's very very good any questions awesome gina yeah. Um, how about Jennifer? You want to hop on? Yes, I just had to unmute myself because I don't know which kid is coming in and out at the same time. 
speaking of which, if you're not presenting, if you can unmute yourself, we had a little bit of conversation going on during Gina's time. Oh, perfect. Awesome. So I'll let you guys, as you're pouring your oats into jars or getting your uh, onions and your chili ingredients out, I just want to introduce myself. My name is Jennifer Porter. I am a homeschool mama of three kids, ages nine to 12. And I know I'm not the only homeschooler out there right now <laughs> with everything going on, but we were homeschooling beforehand. My husband and I live in Fort Myers, Florida. Four years ago, we moved here from Southern California. And when in Southern California, you know, I thought we, um, I thought we were doing pretty good. I thought we were doing okay. You know, we were a typical family. Two out of five of us had allergies. My son used a nebulizer. I was cooking home cooked meals and had a rock and lasagna, an amazing Mexican casserole, and chicken enchiladas that would make your mouth water. We were so good. But I also struggled with um, picky eaters, battles at meal times, just being frustrated. And so on more than one occasion, dinner was honey nut Cheerios and a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, just because I needed to feed them and put something into my kids' belly. Like I didn't want them going to bed hungry, right? So that's what I resorted to. And then during this, uh, or in this community, they showed me that typical was not normal. And that while I was cooking home cooked meals, oh my goodness, like a block of cheese in one <laughs> recipe. Uh, it was, you know, a lot of things that weren't necessarily good for them. Even though it wasn't processed, it was home cooked, it wasn't all that great. And while I sent them to bed with a belly that was full, wasn't doing much for them nutritionally. I was just trying to, you know, get them off my plate, you know, get, get them up to bed. And so through this community, I, I learned how to simplify. I learned um, how to lower my stress. I learned how to heal my kids um, or my family from allergies, from the cold, from the flu, without first going to meds. And a lot of moms I talk to do not want their children on meds. They just, they want them on the least amount of meds as possible. And so through this community, I've been able to do that. And never would I have imagined I'm where I am now uh, five years ago, right? So every day I wake up with passion and purpose. I get to work alongside these encouraging people and I get to inspire mamas to lead their families well, to lower their stress, and to make nutrition easy. So I'm super excited today to share with you our chili crock pot recipe. I'm telling you guys, super simple and it has vegetables in it. It's amazing. All right, so see if you guys are all ready to go. I'm just gonna follow down um, the recipe here. Get out your onions. Maybe you're crying from, from chopping them. I had a saran wrap over mine, so I hope they didn't, I didn't want them to make me cry. Literally, like take your onions and dump them in your crock pot. It's not hard. I like a lot of onions. If you find after you make this, you want to do less, you can do less. But we do a lot of onions in our house. And I'll tell you, I never liked them growing up. All right, so red and yellow bell pepper. Honestly, guys, whatever bell peppers you have. I have some here. They're like, it's a green, green one and a yellow one. But again, just, just don't. Hopefully you have those chopped and you dump your bell pepper in there. It's about half a cup dumped into the crock pot. And then we have a half a cup of chopped carrots. So I literally, I just did mine in rounds. Like these were the big carrots that I actually had to peel. Normally I don't use the ones you have to peel. I just use the baby carrots. <laughs> I need to save my time. But I just literally did them in little rounds. I mean, they'll, they'll, they'll cook up for the little fatter ones. You know, I cut them in half type of thing. Dump. So if you want to save money, use the carrots that you have to peel. If you want to save time, use the little baby carrots. My, my, my word of wisdom for the day. Okay, let's see. All of my beans, so you have one can of black beans, one can of kidney beans and one can of pinto beans. Hopefully you have those washed and rinsed. And I have mine all here in a bowl, but yours washed and rinsed, dump. 
super easy. I talk to moms all the time when they say they don't have time to cut and chop. And I'm telling you, this recipe is a lot easier than some of the recipes I used to cook. Okay, moving on down. Tomato sauce. So a can of tomato sauce, 15 ounces. Pour it in there. And our next is our petite diced tomatoes. Petite diced tomatoes. Pour them in. I love this recipe, you guys. It's just so simple. You just open up cans and pour and a little bit of chopping. You, you can't beat that. What I was gonna say for the petite tomatoes, um, and I, Stephanie and Angie, your mom turned me on to Rotel. I'm sure you could try using this and it would be good in, in the recipe. So just that's, that's an option. This is diced tomatoes and green chilies for Stephanie and Angie. You guys turned me on to that a long time ago. Okay, now we have half a cup frozen corn. So dumping that in there. And then next we have our spices. So it's three teaspoons of chili powder, a teaspoon of cumin, and a teaspoon of salt. So what I would suggest is to pour all of that in there. If you find that it's too spicy, then next time use a little bit less chili powder. I made this and I thought, I, I read this as three tablespoons and I thought, oh my gosh, that's a lot of chili powder. So I'm gonna do two tablespoons and it was still a little picante, still a little spicy for me, but my daughter loved it. All right, uh, that's it. <laughs> that's, that's the whole thing. You can stir it. I can find a spoon. So I'm just gonna stir this up. And you can see this is a pretty big batch of chili. Cool thing is it has tomatoes in there, tomato sauce, carrots, onions, and bell pepper. Bam, love it. Love it. One of my kids does not like onions, so I chop them up really big so she can eat around them. That's her request. So if you need to do that, you know, do that. All right, I'm gonna put the lid on. Plug it in. Now, if you are in California, you could do this on low if you wanted to for six hours. Uh, I'm gonna do it on high because I'm in Florida. And so it's on high for about four plus hours. If you don't have that much time because we are getting towards the evening, then it's okay to turn it off early. Just know when you take it out of the fridge, just cook it for a little bit more and it'll be fine, it'll be great. So a couple options when you have this done is you can put this over potatoes. You can um, take some romaine lettuce and make like a lettuce wrap or a lettuce boat and stick it inside there. If you have a, a, a non-dairy cheese, you can put that on top. We make a really, really yummy cashew cheese sauce that we would put on top of it. You can put it in tortillas. You can um, scramble it with eggs if you want to, or you can scramble it with tofu if you'd like to do that. And what else? Oh, top it with avocado, um, sour cream, dairy-free sour cream. And okay, so I'm not a huge sour cream fan, but my kids have been, and they were, because before all this, we used to eat burritos and quesadillas all the time, Mexican casserole all the time. And so I tried the tofu, dairy, um, tofu sour cream, and my kids didn't notice the difference. So if you're wondering how you can go dairy free and you like sour cream, then give that a try because they liked it. So there's my little encouragement for you to try some other things that are dairy free because your, your family might just like them, like our soup. So that's all I have for the, the chili, we're done.
Anybody have any questions? All good? Jay sure you give me a thumbs up. All right. So we're going to pass it on now back to Stephanie. Yes. And, and she's going to do the next recipe. Yes. And before Stephanie gets started, I want to make a quick announcement. I'm going to take a screenshot. So if everybody wants to turn on their cameras while Stephanie's <laughs> cooking, we can get like a cooking class feel picture. So. Awesome. Just tell us when. Sorry. It's going to be while you're cooking. So I'm oh, gonna okay. While I'm cooking. Okay, perfect. So that I can see everybody else also cooking. Awesome. Okay, guys. So mine is the salad. Um, give me a thumbs up if you're seeing me on the screen because I can't tell on my end. Okay, perfect. Awesome. Um, so this salad is so easy and quick to make. Um, you can do these and put them in this. Well, let me go back really quickly first. If you're from Texas, um, us Texas gals like spice, especially this Texas gal. So I also put these hot sweet jalapenos in my, um, in my chili. Uh, most people that aren't from Texas may not like it, but I actually throw this, and this is at Trader Joe's, and it's really good. So if you're wanting to add a little spice to it, this is awesome. Um, the other thing that, you know, Jennifer, one of the things I used to be a cheese person, and what I found to kind of get me off that was avocado. So adding avocado to like my enchiladas or adding avocado to the top of, of my chili actually gives you that creaminess and it's fantastic. So I just wanna give you those tips um, first. Okay, so let's go to my recipe. Now you can do these in a salad and jar type place, um, but I'm gonna actually do mine in a Tupperware because I eat a lot of food and that's just not enough. I'm making this for a huge meal. But if you're gonna use the salad the jar, when we make the, the salad dressing, you can put the salad dressing in first. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna put the ingredients and then the lettuce is gonna go on top. So let's make the salad dressing first. Um, so if you've already zested, and I have to apologize at the beginning, I make salad dressings and I just kind of add stuff and kind of taste it and add more stuff and taste it. So I kind of, sort of gave you what the um the uh ingredients and how much they are but um you can also change it because that's kind of what i do um one big tip on salad dressings a lot of times when you go and you look at a recipe you will see that there'll be like a fourth of a cup of olive oil that's a lot of olive oil <laughs> so i cut a lot of my olive oil out of there and how i do it is i add water so um, I'll add water to taste and then add a few more ingredients and that's kind of how I make my salad dressing. So um, some people may like it a little bit like more like tart. Some people, you know, even if you add vinegar or things like that to salad dressings and it's too much vinegar, add some water to it and it'll cut some of it down. So that's a little, a little trick that you can do. So I have my um, juice limes, I mean, sorry, lemons. And I used three only because I had three. So some limes, I mean, gosh, I say limes. Some lemons have more juice and others don't, but this one was about three. Um, if I have stuff left over, then I have stuff left over. So we're gonna add the, I zested my um, uh, lime before and then juiced it. So we're gonna add the, 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 the lemon, sorry, lemon zest to the recipe for the dressing. Now, I, I use spicy mustard as probably one of the big ingredients that I use in a lot of, oops, in a lot of my recipes. It just exploded on me. Gotta love that, huh? Good thing I like it. So adding at least a tablespoon. If you want a little bit more, you can always add two tablespoons. A lot of times I like to taste it at the very end to see um, how it tastes. And then I add a little, a little more of my ingredients. You can add, if you want to go completely vegan, you can add maple syrup or you can add honey. Um, so it just kind of depends on what you want. And it's probably around like one, one um, teaspoon of that. And then we add salt and pepper. And then you can kind of taste it. If you need it to taste a little bit like down from the lemon, it's, if it's too much. I actually don't even know how much salt and pepper I put in. I just put some in and then I I think I gave you some sort of recommendations, but you can add more, a little, however, however you like it. And then I mix everything up. And if I need to tone down the taste of it a little bit, I will add water to it. 
So let's just mix all of this up. And this, this salad dressing is so refreshing in the summer because of the lemon zest. It's very, um, it's very light. I mean, I just kind of taste it. And again, if it's too, if it has too much lemony, then I add just a little bit of water. Um, and again, you just kind of mess around with it. If you like a little bit more spice to it, add a little bit more mustard. If you want a little bit more sweetness to it, add a little bit more maple syrup or um, honey. If you, um, you can always add more salt and pepper. So I just kind of taste it and see. Mmm, so good. Oh my gosh. Can't wait to eat it. Okay. I'm the worst on licking the spoons too. Um, <laughs> that's the salad dressing. <laughs> and then if you want to, again, you can you do the salad dressing in your jar first. Um, you'll put the salad dressing and then we'll add some of the ingredients and then we'll add the arugula at the top. I'm gonna do it a little bit differently. Um, Cause I'm gonna split it up into like big containers like this. And then my salad dressing, I'm just gonna put to the side, put a top on it and then I'll use it when I wanna when I want to eat this, which tonight I'm going to eat it. So you're going to put arugula. If you're doing it in a jar, put the tomatoes in. The um, You're going to put the dark cherries in, and then you're going to put the uh, almonds in. If you're going to do it like me, then you'll put the arugula in, and you'll just kind of do it in the reverse. And then I just kind of split up the tomatoes in each one. Uh, I love this rice medley from Trader Joe's because I literally can heat it up for like three minutes and then it's good to go. And then I just kind of put that in there as well, make it a little bit heartier. So I kind of put it's half Stephanie. in one and the other half in the other. Stephanie, can you show me the rice medley? Cause I forgot to get it. What, what else in there? Oh my gosh, it's um, brown rice, red rice and black barley. Okay. Okay. Thank you. One of my favorites from Trader Joe's because you can use it really quickly. And then you have your dark cherries or cranberries, whatever you want. Um, and literally like that's, that's it. Oh, sorry. I do my almonds. I always put uh, my uh, different types of nuts in the jars too. So it's easy for me to grab them and see what I have and what I need to get when I'm and the almonds, you can toast them too if you want to. I did this time. Oops. Damn. So that's one of my salads. I'm gonna make one more really quickly while I'm here. You can see how quickly this goes when you make a plan for what you want on a Sunday. You'll really be able to plan out your week and it makes your life so much easier when you come with a plan. Same thing, kind of thing. If you chop everything up ahead of time, it makes it easy just to throw everything together really quickly. You can add the rice. So I have two. Hey, Stephanie. Yeah. Oh, if, okay. if we don't have a bag of Trader Joe's for rice, how much rice? Do you, are you estimating that it is? Is like you know two what, cups? If you did like a cup of rice cooked or so, um, I bet if you took half of that well in one of my salads and did the other half in another one, but my salads are really thick because I literally will eat all of this. Or you can split something like this with like your spouse or you can make this and have it your kids, but this is what I'll eat. I'll eat the whole thing and that'll be my dinner. It won't be just like this with something else. Okay. Mm. And then almonds, and then literally, guys, that is is it. That is your salad, and it's so yummy. And we're good. We did it. We finished all of our meals. It was super easy, and it was uh, super quick, and I can't wait to hear more about how you guys liked the recipes. So before we end, um, I'm going to stay on the line a little bit if you guys have any questions for us, because um, I know we're getting close to the end of, of the hour, but I just wanted to kind of sum it up at the very end, you know, 
Um, always trying to find simple ways of getting more plants. That's like, that's my, I, like, how can I get more plants into my body that's easy? Um, and Juice Plus for me is one of those solutions as well as planning everything. Um, yes, uh, I did not cook my rice ahead of time. I, I put it in the microwave because if you get the Trader Joe's stuff, the microwave will, um, it does, I, I just heat it up for three minutes and then I let it, I let it uh, cool off. Um, but you can, can cook your rice ahead of time. So yeah, so making some simple changes um, in your in what you do. Um, other things are there's there's ways of, of even kind of partnering with us. If you're someone that's like I love this community, I'd love to do more, um, you know, and want to learn what that looks like, then definitely get with a person that um, invited you um, in, into this talk, and then always reach out to the people. We do events like these all the time. We do a monthly. We have other events that happen weekly. Um, we're always trying to find ways to provide education um, in, in many a ways on just trying to make ourselves um, really a better versions of ourselves and healthier versions of ourselves because I, I know with me being in, in healthcare, we don't really have a healthcare system. We have a sick care system and there's so much that you can do and our bodies have an amazing ability to heal if we give it the right environment. And that's really the hope that I want to end this with for you is that you, you, our bodies can heal if we give it the right environment. And um, we're a whole community that are here waiting to help you in any way. So I'll open it up. Um, let me stop the recording. All right. Thank you, Stephanie. I'm